adjusting to the new normal. Should we bring Christmas back and great board games to pass the time? Welcome to The Hopefulist, a daily talk show hosted by veteran broadcaster Wendy McClure. Join Wendy each day as she shares her life lessons that transformed her from perpetual pessimist to the ultimate hopefulist. The perfect morning show to get you caught up on the day's top stories while sharing insights that will lead to positive transformation and bring out the hopefulist in you. For more inspiration, visit hopefulist.com. And now, here's your host and hopefulist, Wendy McClure. Hello and welcome to a Thursday. It is March 19th, 2020. Day 186 of Got to Get On, Alan. People, it is the first day of spring. Woohoo! Can we hear a little applause for that? Yes. First day of spring. Comes in at 11.49 tonight. The days are already longer. Weather getting a little bit better. But should we be putting up our Christmas lights? That is the question. <laughs> So I saw an article last night about how people are putting their Christmas lights back up to spread a little cheer during this time of corona craziness. I don't know. I can dig it. I doubt I will put my tree back up. My my husband already said no. But, you know, I could have the tree up and decorate it before he even gets home from work. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hallmark has now rolled out a... Christmas movie marathon for all of us that are stuck at home with nothing to do. So it looks like it's time to bring Christmas back right here on the first day of spring. I don't know. I might bring something out. Something a little Christmassy. Maybe I'll start drinking from my Mr. Santa mug pants again. He is adorable. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. I got some things working in my mind here. Well, I'll figure it out. So uh, if you are interested in doing something like that, let me know. Let us see it. Post it on the group page. It would be so cool to see somebody's house all holidayed up here in the middle of March. So on a serious note, it looks like we're up to about 8,000 cases nationwide of coronavirus. We've got 430 in New Jersey alone with five deaths. New York State, it's insane. 2,400 cases. A lot of fighting going on here in the resort town that I live in. I'm actually going to dedicate a little bit of um, tomorrow's podcast to, you know, stopping all this judgment. Stop arguing with everybody. Let's just try to get along. Now, there's a big, huge debate here, like I said, in my resort town, because a lot of people, now that they are off of work, they are coming down to their vacation home. And it's being recommended that you don't do that. They want you to stay put. And there's a number of reasons for that. One is just so there's less chance of of spreading the virus, less chance of moving it from one area all the way to another area. Because again, you may not get symptoms for two weeks. You may not get symptoms at all, and you could still be a carrier of this virus. So there's been a lot of arguing back and forth about the uh, selfish locals who are telling the uh, people who have second homes here to uh, stay away, and the and on the flip side, uh, the people who have second homes here are saying, "I will go where I want, when I want. It's my house. I pay taxes and pay my mortgage every month." I see both sides, but like I said, there are wor- there they are worried about you bringing the virus in, and a lot of these people are coming from North Jersey, which is close to New York, which has so many more cases. The other issues that they're worried about is the towns are not yet set up for tourism season. Therefore, they don't have the uh, amount of food, supplies, what have you, that they would normally have for the amount of people that come down in, say, the summertime. So they're a little worried that supplies are not going to be plentiful and we're going to continue running out. 
The other issue is that it's going to overwhelm the medical systems here. Again, not prepared for the amount of people that are here during the tourist season. So if you do get sick and you need to go to the hospital, they're worried that it's going to overwhelm the system. So I'm just telling you what the theories are behind it. I'm not telling anyone what they should do. If you have a second home here and you choose to come down here, the only thing I would suggest is bring food with you. Bring it with you. Don't wait here to get don't wait to get here and then go out and shop. Uh, that would be a nice thing to do, is what I'm saying. But then stay put. You know, I, I get the thinking behind it. Okay, I don't have the coronavirus. None of us think we have it. I don't think I have it. So we think, okay, well, what's the difference if I just get in my car and drive down to my shore house and just stay put in my shore house? Well, if that's what you're going to do, then that's fine, I think. A lot of people disagree with me on that. But try not to overwhelm the supply chain here is all I'm saying. Um, Yes, we should have enough for everybody, hopefully, but we're already running scarce. Just my two cents, again, I'm not making any judgments. People are going to do what they want to do regardless of the judgment that they're facing on Facebook. So to get in these arguments is kind of ridiculous. And now I've really gone off on a tangent on it, and I wanted to wait until tomorrow to talk about that. So I'm going to zip it right now. In other news, our St. Nick, for our Eagles fans that are listening, our St. Nick, Nick Foles, been traded to the Chicago Bears from the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, if you remember, he broke his collarbone last year. He only played in four games. So I'm not sure if he's being traded as a starting quarterback or if he's going to be delegated to a backup like he was here at the Eagles. This is what I was saying yesterday. The Eagles really seem to know when it's time to let someone go. Um, imagine all of the people who insisted that we keep Nick Foles over Carson Wentz. And I was even on that party train for a while. And then he broke his collarbone in the first game. And then we had gotten rid of like this you know, amazing quarterback. You just never know what's going to happen. But what I was saying is the Eagles seem to have always been very good about figuring out who to keep and who it is time to let go of. So with that, I'm going to move right along to the topic. I've been trying to do topics all week of fun things that you can do or interesting things that you can do to keep yourself occupied if you are indeed um, stuck at home, which most of us are. Some people are still working, and uh, I'm very happy for you if you are. My husband is still working. He does not work in a public area. Um, so it's, it's very comforting that it, for the time being, at least his income has not changed, but I wanted to talk about board games today because that's something that you can do with the whole family, right? What is your favorite board game? I don't think I can really narrow it down to one, honestly, because there's so many that I enjoy. There is buzzword, which my husband had mentioned that is it's kind of a little-known game. It's not huge, um, but it's so much fun. There is Cards Against Humanity. That is always a fun game. I was wondering if um, anybody would say puzzles, if they included that in, in a board game type uh, scenario. I didn't see anybody mention puzzles, but that's another good option. Joe and I are card players. We like to play cards. Um, so I know that's not a board game, but it is certainly a game. Teresa says that life is a classic. It is. You know, my sister and I used to play life growing up. She was a big old cheater. She cheated constantly, and I never caught on. Never caught on. Apparently what she would do is she would, you know, cheat and always land on kids. Get on, She would have, and she would. She would have this car, and she didn't even have, enough holes in the little car for all the kids that she had because you got money for the more kids you had, the more money you got. She uh, confessed that to me later. 
I'm still traumatized over it. I just can't believe she would cheat like that. Now, Marcy says, I don't really have one, but me and the boys played three games of Blocus last night. I'm not even sure what Blocus is. She says, and then we played Parcheesi. I remember Parcheesi. I definitely played that when I was a kid. Diane says Scrabble, uh, as does Janet. Now, Jim says Checkers. Lynn says Taboo. Larry and Connie both say Monopoly. Kimberly says Scategories. Corinne and Sandra say Clue. And Melissa says Sorry. Now, there was a game that I really, really enjoyed. And I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, but it had like a little, it has like a little, um, what, well, I don't even know what to call it. It, it just has like a little uh, thing that you hold and you would, uh, a name of something would come up or a thing or what have you. And then you had to get someone to guess it. And then when somebody guessed it on your team, you got to pass the little thing to the next person. And then when uh, it was on a timer, so whoever got stuck with the thing when the timer went off lost that round. I think that's the way it went. Uh, But there was a lot of fighting when we used to play that game. And I cannot remember for the life of me what that game is called. But it is so much fun. I remember a few years ago I had a girls weekend with uh, some of Joe's family. And I remember we were playing that game. (laughs) His cousin was, I don't remember what she was using to, um, what she was using to describe the word, but I just yelled out, photosynthesis. And she looked at me and her eyes got really wide. She goes, I can't believe you got photosynthesis. I never thought in a million years anyone would be able to guess that word. (laughs) I was like, well, you know, what can I say? Patted myself on the back a little bit. I don't know. I can't remember the name of the game. I know you guys know. I know you know it. I know you're yelling it out. So fun. Used to get into so many fights with people over that game. Going on to today's blog post. Oh, Tucker is up and out and about. Look at her walking around. Oh, she's going to start playing with her little reef. Her little reef, that is. I don't know. She's awfully uh, bouncy for 6.32 in the morning. She's usually still uh, out cold on the couch. I hope she doesn't have to go out. It's pouring, pouring rain out there right now. Oh, it's just gloomy which is going to make it a little harder for today's uh, hope and purpose of today's blog. But we are talking about adjusting to the new normal. And I have put up yet another picture of an adorable puppy. This one packed into a camera bag. (laughs) He is adorable. Now, I got a little bit of a complaint yesterday from Marcy and her cat, uh, Leonidas, Leonidas. Uh, about how they like kittens better. And I did consider uh, putting some a picture of kitties up today, but you know what? The hopeless prefers of puppies. So that's what it is going to be for today. I'm not saying there will never be kitties. I'm just saying that I, I downloaded a couple of pup- puppy pictures yesterday, and some of them are just too cute to wait on. So sorry about that. So one of the most scary parts of this coronavirus is we don't know how long it is going to last and affect our daily lives. Everything's closed in my area. No dining restaurants, no hair or nail salons, no bars, no malls. Just essential services right now, such as food stores, gas stations, pharmacies. They even closed the beach. The beach! Thank goodness I got my girl and I out there yesterday to check out the sunrise. It's a time when anything can happen. I never thought they would close the beach. We never know what is coming. So what do we do to quell our own fears? One thing is to keep a routine. Be vigilant in or uh, vigilant in getting done what you need to do. And make sure to take in the joyful moments as they come, like this picture of this puppy in a camera bag. Oh, my gosh. Now, I admit it. I've been a slacker all this week. You can't help but feel a sense of doom and want to just veg out in front of the TV or dive into a book. And escape all the unsettled feelings. And I work from home. There's no reason in the world I can't carry on as I have been. But I've been feeling a little down. I guess I'm entitled a little. But it's been three days now. And since we don't know how long this new normal is going to last, we better start getting a little more productive. There comes a 